guys, how's it going? Dandy Pasquale here. Today I'm doing a quick video on Tony Maja Bunker Spoons. Tony Spoons have become one of the most consistent and effective ways to catch striped bass up here in the Northeast, especially in New Jersey over the last couple of years. So today, I'm going to break down the spoons, show you guys how to rig them, how to fish them, along with some tips. So first off, Tony makes four different sizes of bunker spoons, depending on the size of the bait fish that's in the area. They're number one through four. So first off, we have the number one. This is the smallest size that Tony makes, and it's for peanut bunker. Next, we have the number two, which is for lollipop bunker or butterfish. And I apologize, I'm sorry, I do not have the number three here with me, with me right now, but the number three is slightly bigger than the number two, and it's for regular size bunker or herring. And next, we have the number four, which is the largest size that Tony makes. And the number four bunker spoon is for adult bunker or porgy. And up here in Jersey, over the last couple of years, the dominant bait fish has been the adult bunker. So the number four spoon has been the most popular and absolutely deadly. Now, when you're trolling a bunker spoon, the spoon's imitating a wounded bait fish in the water. So it's sweeping side to side, back and forth. And it drives the fish absolutely nuts. Totally crazy. I'm going to get some footage this upcoming season of the spoons in action, hooking up with the fish. I'll make sure I get that on the page. But, you know, these really are a dynamite product, the gateway to big fish, and, you know, absolutely deadly. If you're serious about striper fishing, definitely check out Tony Maja Bunker Spoons. All right, so how to rig them. Now, we troll braid on our boat, and the braid itself doesn't get the spoon down there to the right depth. Now, you want the spoon around five feet off the bottom, and the braid itself, you know, and the spoon, it doesn't get it down there that deep. Therefore, we have to use a drill. Now, in shall shallower water, you know, 20 or 30 feet, we're using an 8-ounce trail. In deeper water, 40, 50, or 60 feet, we're using a 16-ounce trail. So, we tie a snap onto the braid. This is where we attach the trail. On the other end of the trail, there already is a snap, and this is where you attach the leader. Now, for the leader, we use 10 to 12 feet of 60 pound. Now, fluorocarbon is not necessary, right? We have a swivel on the one end. We attach this to the snap on the drill. On the other end, we have a Tony Maja beaded three inch swivel. And this is where you attach the bunker spoon. Now, wire line's also very popular when trolling bunker spoons. And when you're trolling with wire line, you do not need a drill. The wire line itself gets the bunker spoon down there. And Tony actually has a chart on his website breaking down the different wire weights and how far you need to send them back in certain depths to get to the right range. Now, with braid, we use 65 pound meter braid that Tony makes and the meter braid is very very helpful it's much more accurate and consistent when setting the spoons back instead of just guessing now with 16 ounces we're usually setting them back 250 to 300 feet in shallower water you know with 8 ounces we're usually going back 200 to 225 feet all right in the back here you'll see the Tony Maja easy out rider all right we put one on each side of the boat, both on the port and starboard side, in the rod holder, and I'll have a video at the end after this with the outriders in action, but you'll see here, you have the pin that goes in and locks them, you have a gimbal on the end here for the butt that locks the rod in, and the purpose of the outrider is to get the rod parallel with the surface of the water to really get the spoon down there and working. Now when you're trolling the rod in either the rod holder or the outrider, make sure you have a loose drag and the drag clicker on. Because when that fish hits, you want him to take the spoon, and after this, his first initial run, that's when you tighten the drag and turn the clicker off to fight the fish. If you have it too tight on the first hit, you know the spoon's going to come right out and you're going to miss the fish. So one of the the biggest things you know people ask about bunker spoon fishing is how fast do I need to troll? Need to troll, and that all depends on the rod you know you're using to troll the spoons. It's all in the action of the tip. You want a nice steady pulse and when I say that that's the spoon going back and forth side to side right when it's going too fast that's when the spoon goes in circles that's when you catch bluefish and, you know the tip then is going back and forth inconsistently very fast when it's going too slow the spoons barely working and the rod tips going back and forth really slowly you know barely even moving so bump it up a little bit now for us on our boat with the rods we troll, Tony makes bunker spoon rods, he actually has a combo, check that out. 
And when we're trolling, we're usually going around three knots or so. If it's, you know, really calm out, we're up, we might have to bump, bump it up a little bit. But, you know, usually around three knots. If it's snotty out, you might not need to go that fast. But, like I said, it's all in the pulse in your rod tip. You want a nice, steady pulse. And I'll put, actually, I'll put a video after this one with the with the rods in action to, to try to show you guys how they work. All right, so another thing you'll notice here is we have a bunch of different colors. Tony makes a two-tone uh, green and yellow chartreuse. We have a chrome, a white, a yellow, and a green. Tony makes all colors and all sizes, and it really does change day to day. There's no consistent pattern. Sometimes it changes by, changes by time of day. Now, um, you know, if I had to pick two from this past season that were the most the most productive, either the white or green, I mean the chrome, the yellow, and the two-tone over here, the chartreuse, weren't far behind at all, but, you know, really, the key is, get when you get out there, mix it up, find out what color the fish are keyed in on, and you know, after 10 minutes or so, if you don't catch anything, switch the colors out, and once you find, once you find out, you know, what the, what they're on, then you're in, you're in for a good time. So, oh, one thing I forgot to mention here. We have the safety cord, Tony Maja. Just to be safe, we attach this to the clamp on the reel, clip it on. We have the loop on here that ties to the cleat, just in case we ever did lose, you know, control of the rod. Just rather be safe than sorry. And another thing you'll notice here on the on the spoons is the stinger hooks. Now, spoons are, you know, regular, the regular, regular, they come with a Nino Siwash Mustad, and you know the Stinger Hooks, another Tony product, all right. And if you're tournament fishing, you know big fish, you don't want to risk it, so the Stinger Hook is nice to have, but it's not necessary. And finally, the biggest thing about bunker spoon fishing, when you hook up with the bunk, when you hook up with the fish on a bunker spoon, when you're fighting the fish, never, ever, ever, ever ever put any slack in the line at all keep that rod tip up do not put it down don't stop reeling you want a nice steady crank all right don't go really fast and stop and sometimes the fish is going to run at you but when that happens you know speed up a little bit but when you get tension again don't stop you know um gradually slow back down to a regular regular retrieve but when you're you know the rods are going back and forth and you're out of control reeling too fast or you look away, you don't pay attention, and the tip goes down. This hook is gonna. This is a 9 0 hook, and every time that fish shakes his head or makes a run, this hook is making a hole in the fish's mouth. And I'll put a picture at the end of the video of a picture of the hole, and it's much bigger than you think, but this hook will pop right, right out you know, once there's a little slack in the line. So the key to that constant tension. You can also put your thumb on the line while fighting the fish to keep constant tension, but. Make sure you keep that rod tip up. And that's about it, guys. So please check out Tony's page. You know, like I said, absolute dynamite product. Gateway to big fish. We've had tons of success with them. Those fish in the intro video were just a few of the many, many fish we've caught. And tons and tons of other people have also done very well with the spoons. So like I said, please check out the page. Find a dealer near you. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or requests, please put them in the comment box below. Tons of more videos coming throughout the year, so stay tuned. If you like these videos, please subscribe. Tight lines, catch them up. I'll see you guys out in the water. Here we have a quick view of the rig with the leader coiled up.